Hello everyone, this is a screencast to demonstrate the use of our computer-assisted structure elucidation software Seneca 2.0. Assume you've downloaded Seneca from the SourceForge website. Um, you have to choose the correct installation file for your architecture. In our case we've used, we've chosen the DMG file for macOS. So I would just double click the DMG it will be mounted and opens and as you can see here we've got the application and in order to install it you just need to drag and drop it to the applications folder drag and drop and in my case it's already in there um, so I would click replace to override the old version I can then just hit command return or go to the Applications folder and start the Seneca application. Let's close this here. Then Seneca loads and basically this is what you end up with. Let's just resize the window to fit into the sc screencast here. And you can see an empty window, no dataset is loaded. In order to play with, with Seneca you just click on the Open button and you load one of the example files. In this case, because it's a nice and small problem, is the uh, we load Eurobidiol. These example files can be downloaded from the SourceForge website as a zip file um, or they will also be included in the next uh, release of the DMG file. Okay, so here we've got all the information that is available for the Eurobidiol structure elucidation case. Uh, let's go from top to bottom and look at all the different types of information that are available. General settings contains uh, a file name, a description of the problem, in this case we haven't got any, and a molecular formula and a molecular mass. The molecular formula is absolutely essential for Seneca. You need to have this information for example from a high-res uh, mass spectrum because all the other computations are based on the molecular formula. Then next you see um, a set of NMR spectra. We've got the 1D carbon NMR containing 15 signals, a set of PPM values for all these signals, an intensity, in this case this is all one because we've extracted this from the experimental section of an, of an article and we've got uh, all positive phase of the signals. The phases are important in the next two cases. The depth 90 spectrum contains only positive signals for those carbon atoms that contain, that have exactly one hydrogen attached. The depth 135 has positive signals for those carbons that have one or three hydrogens and negative signals for carbons with exactly two attached, directly attached hydrogen atoms, CH2 groups. And last but not least, we've also got um, a one bond CH correlation. We call that hydrogen carbon heteronuclear correlation here, generic name. This could be the old fashioned CH cozy or HSQC, HMQC, um, more modern versions of this experiment and then we've got the 2D carbon hydrogen long range correlations that correlate hydrogens and carbons which are two or three or even more bonds apart. So you can see here for example there's a correlation between a hydrogen resonating at 0.92 ppm at the bottom uh, and a carbon resonating at 32.2 uh, ppm and this tells us that this hydrogen and this carbon in the skeleton of the unknown compound are two, three or even more bonds apart. And also here we have a, an intensity and a phase which again in this case because it was extracted from the literature is all set to one. The next part is something that requires your um, 
interaction. This is the central panel for the assignment of the spectral information to the atoms from the molecular formula. As you can see here, Seneca has expanded those 15 carbons and the two oxygens, the heavy atoms, from the molecular formula into just uh, a column of atom symbols. And then it went through the spectral information and did an assignment of the chemical shifts from the carbon atom to all of the atoms, to all of the carbons in the molecular formula. It could do this because in the beginning we don't know anything about any of these atoms here. So we can just um, sequentially assign the carbon shifts to those atoms. It then tw went through the information from the depth spectra and did a hydrogen assignment. This is just a little bit of logic. You um, assign one hydrogen to all of those carbons that have a depth 90 value. You assign two hydrogens to all of those carbons that have a negative phase in the depth 135. And then the rest of the sequence for which we have depth information must be methyl groups, CH3 groups. It then does a little bit of accounting here at the bottom. You can see that the hydrogen count in the molecular formula is 28, but the sum of the assigned hydrogens at the moment in this table, based on the depth information, is just 26. So there are two surplus hydrogens which clearly must be attached to those two oxygens. So this we have to do manually. In this case it could be easily done automatically, but uh, there are more complicated cases where the assignment is unclear and in this case um, the user has to decide about the hydrogen attachments to heteroatoms. And as you can see here once we've done this the sum of the hydrogens in the molecular formula and the sum of the hydrogens in this table is equal so there is no need to do any further work here. Now comes the interesting part. Um, Seneca does a stochastic search of constitution space and while it walks through constitution space for any further details I have to refer you to our publications about Seneca. Um, while it walks through this space it judges the fitness of the structure it is currently looking at with respect to the similarity between computed spectral properties and measured spectral properties. And for this judgment we have the different judges which contribute to the target function of Seneca. For example here we've got the carbon shift judge which checks if a, uh, the hybridization state of a particular uh, carbon atom is uh, within a certain range, within the measured range given by the 1D carbon spectrum. We then have um, a natural product likeness judge in this particular case here which is in this case not enabled. I'm not going to go into the details because this is still work in progress and uh, what is actually important is the carbon long range judge which um, will check if the CH long range correlations are in agreement with the structure that we are currently investigating. This graph here actually shows you uh, the, all the correlations between the different carbon atoms uh, which have been determined from the carbon hydrogen long range correlation. So this has already been um, automatically configured and we can now go through all the way down to the simulation pane where uh, you've got the different methods for doing Seneca structure elucidations. We've got adaptive simulated annealing, simulated annealing and the evolutionary algorithm. Those um, different algorithms can be configured in the configuration pane. The nice thing is that for the evolutionary algorithm you don't need to configure anything, uh, which is why we 
are only going to look at this at the moment. So Seneca performs a stochastic search of constitution space looking for an optimal solution for this structure elucidation problem. But it cannot guarantee in a single run that it will find the global optimum. This is why this type of stochastic searches is usually run multiple times either in parallel or sequentially and people would then collect the results and perform the analysis uh, on the collected results. Also in this case we want to increase our chance to find the global optimum by starting a couple of local servers. We just do this by clicking here on the start local server button. Let's start four servers. You can also use eight or sixteen depending on how powerful your machine is. Some modern desktop machines have eight cores or even more. So you should be able to do this. You can also run this type of computation on a local Beowulf cluster, but that's a different topic. So in order to start the computation, you would just select all of the servers by holding the shift key and clicking on the last column. And then you can click on the start structure generation button down here. And you can see immediately the status of all of those four servers is switching to running and over here in the last column you see the number of iterations performed. The whole computation takes a while um, to get started but then the optimization is going quite uh, smoothly and quickly. Uh, over here you can see the course of the iterations showing the numbers. Down here you see the best currently found structure for each of the uh, local servers. The application is cycling through the optimization on the different servers. Here is uh, a graph showing the fitness for the first ser four servers in different colors versus the number of generations uh, currently performed. And down here again the application is cycling through the textual summary, summary of, of the, of the progress, progress of the optimization on each of the servers. Here in the score summary you see the maximum possible score of 3800 and over here the current score in the different servers. Behind this summary there is uh, an indiv individual summary for the score of each of the judges and how many of the um, how much of the information in each of the judge is actually currently satisfied. You can see that all of the different servers have come quite close to the actual solution, um, but none of them has actually reached the, the solution so far. We just give it a little bit more time to find the correct solution. And here we go. Um, server number two has found the correct solution with 3800 um, as a maximum score. And you can see here in the upper right corner this server has already finished its optimization whereas the other servers are still running. For the sake of keeping this presentation short um, we're just finishing the structure generation at this step. You can see that now all of the servers are stopped and you can, you can click on the summarize results video window to get a summary of the structures that have been found. And you can see here this is indeed um, this is the best structure with score 1. Here the score is normalized between 0 and 1 with 1 being the optimum score and this here is actually the correct structure for Eurovideol and these here are slightly less correct solutions. Um, you might end up with cases where the spectral information is not good enough 
to actually determine the structure and in this case you want to go through the set of best solutions and make your own judgment of whether you which one you think is the solution that best fits or which could be a basis for further investigations and with this um, I thank you and I finish my first run through uh, the functionalities of Seneca for structure elucidation.